typical Levi. Who's droning when we're supposed to be leaving. Just give me a sec. <laughs> Better not miss the ferry. the drone it crashed okay. it's a fantastic start to a day when you accidentally clip a tree branch and crash the drone i should have been more attentive i was rushing trying to not miss this ferry and still get a sweet drone shot but it's okay because the drone is fine it didn't even really get that i just broke a propeller or two see look the drone's fine nothing's wrong we are now going to leave camp here leave vancouver island we've been here for a couple days head home and uh, yeah, just get back to normal life. Hi there. Hello. Two adults for Tawasin? Two adults. How long is this? 22 feet. 22 feet. You will make the boat. Okay. Did he say he won't make the boat? I don't know. What does the ticket say? Just 10 05 that we bought it. I don't know if he said you won't make the boat or you will. Oh, he did. Did we make the boat? Yes, we made it on the boat. I'm so close. <laughs> and just like that, we barely made the ferry. I feel like that's the story of our life for island trips. Always trying to get just as much time as you can get on the island while still making the ferry. <laughs> but uh, made it on the boat, it's not very full, and uh, it's gonna be a fun ride. Oh man, I love being on the ferry. I wish it wasn't the only like practical way to get to the island because it's kind of sucky when all your trips have to be like planned around ferry times and you can't just like drive here. But at the same time, I think the ferry is kind of what keeps this place separated, it keeps it special, you know? It doesn't allow it to like become too much like the mainland. Okay, so we launched the Slackline Series trailer on Saturday and that went amazingly well. Thank you so, so, so much for everyone who liked, commented, and just sent me emails responding about how excited they were. That just makes me, it just fills me with so much gratitude and thankfulness for just like having the support that you have offered me, so thank you. And I reached out on Instagram and asked, does anyone have any questions that I can answer about the series? and I got some in, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer those. Okay, I got a question from Major Danger. He says, after the first documentary, did more people come out and join the Highline community in Squamish? Yes, more people did. Don't know how many, but I know some people sent me messages asking how they could get involved, and they did, so yeah. Clinton asks, what locations will all be in the series? Love your work, man, so stoked for this. The locations we filmed at for the series are both Squamish and then Northern British Columbia where we went to Hunland Falls. So those are the two main areas that are in the series. Darren asks, how did you initially get involved with slacklining? I tried my first slacklining at a music festival that my buddy was running back in like 2012. And I like tried the slackline and I was like, that's cool. And then I went to school and my friend was like, hey man, have you heard of slacklining? And I was like, 
yeah, we should do it. And so we went and bought like ratchet straps from the hardware store and learned how to slack line. That was with my buddy Brent Bandy. And then when I moved to Vancouver Island, when I moved off of Vancouver Island, that's when I met the Vancouver slacklining community, found out there was highlining. And that's how I decided I wanted to make a film about it. So that's how I initially got involved. Jacob asks your first highline experience. Uh, my first highline experience was actually like the first time walking on a highline was after we went to Hunland Falls and the Europeans, the Germans were still here in Canada. So there's some people visiting from German that were Germany that were in the Slack Life series. Uh, they came with us to Hunland Falls and Valet Rap uh, was one of the guys who helped film and Lucas and Freddy are both in the series as well and just a lot of stuff like that. And when we came back from Hunland Falls, that was the first day that I personally decided I was gonna leave the camera at home and give it a go myself. And that was at a line down in Lighthouse Park in Vancouver and I walked my first high line. Technically it's a mid line, but it was leashed in and it was just enough to get me uh, pretty amped up as far as like the adrenaline. So that was a blast. Got a, got a good 10 steps in, which I was pretty stoked about. I got a question from my buddy, Ben. He says, what was the biggest unexpected challenge to come up in production? Uh, also, where was Spencer backflipping into? So nuts. Uh, so the biggest unexpected challenge, I think, I think actually in this case, the biggest unexpected challenge was a lack of uh, conflict, which seems odd, but I was expecting us to run into some more like situational conflict as we set out to do some of these projects, but everything kind of went exactly according to plan. So that was actually a challenge for me as a storyteller because I like to base my stories around the conflict that's happening. And uh, that was a challenge for me because there wasn't much conflict happening. Uh, where was Spencer backflipping into? Well, that big waterfall there, we rigged a rope swing across the waterfall and he's backflipping into his rope swing jump. So I'm really excited to share all of the scenes from that. It's gonna be pretty rad. Okay, next question from Smart Film Beast. He says, how did you charge all your batteries in the mountains? Uh, when we were shooting in Squamish, every day when we came back down, I would charge them off the batteries in my van or use someone else's solar setup. And then when we were up at Hunland Falls, we actually brought like one of these Honda EU 2000 generators with us so we could charge all the drone batteries and things like that. That's how we kept our batteries charged. Okay, that's kind of it for the questions. Thanks for those who sent those in. Uh, if you want to ask questions next time, make sure you're following me on the Instagram. Also, if you think I've earned it, I actually send out all my videos early to my newsletter so you can get the videos early if you're on that newsletter. And it's a lot more fun because then you can respond to my inbox directly and I really just love having that connection with you guys. So thank you so, so much for watching. I'm really excited to share more about the series as things kind of unfold. That's the plan for now. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better when you make stuff.